What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Game Night YouTube channel. It is time for more Iron Helm, guys. I am so excited to get into this, dudes. We've got the new character creation system from the Gnome Pack ready to go. We've got eight race cards and eight class cards, and we also have these six double-sided star sign cards, giving us a total of 12 different star signs that we could start with. So, guys, we're going to jump right into it and pick a random character. We're going to head over to the computer and use a little spinner wheel, and we're going to pick our character randomly. So let's get into it. First, let's pick our race. So I've got all eight races on the wheel. We're going to go ahead and give it a spin and see what we get here, dudes. Who are we going to get? I'm kind of hoping for a wood elf. It's looking like it's not going to be a wood elf. <laughs> a crawling. Yep, we got the crawling. Okay, so that is our race. Let's go ahead and pick our class. Okay, I've got the eight classes ready to go. Let's give it a spin. I'm really hoping for Cutthroat. That just sounds pretty interesting to me. It's not looking like it, though. It's looking like a Parson. Okay, cool. So we got the Parson for the class. Let's go ahead and see what our star sign is going to be. All 12 of the star signs are on the wheel. Let's give it a spin and see what we're going to get. I'm not even going to hope for anything because I'm probably not going to get it <laughs> the way it's been looking. Of the rabbit? Is it of the rabbit? <laughs> of the rabbit, dude. That is our star sign. Of the rabbit. Alright guys, we got a crawling parson of the rabbit. This ought to be interesting. Let's go ahead and go over the character. So, as you can see here, we have both of these cards for the character, and we also have its star sign here as well. So we're going to go over each of these individually here. So I guess we could do both of these at the same time, because we're going to need to combine the stats together. So we've got 14 health. I've got that set up. We also have 10 energy, 7 from the Crawling, 3 from the Parson. I've got that set up as well. And then we've got the 1 food that we go into the dungeon with and 2 gold right there like so. And it says for the Crawling, race ability. Once per dungeon level, you may spend health instead of energy to attack an enemy. If this hit kills the enemy, you gain 1 blessing token. Whoa. That's interesting. So we could we could use our own health as an energy source once per dungeon level to attack an enemy. If we kill him, we'll gain a blessing token. That's pretty neat. Okay, cool. And then we've also got the Parson is our class, and it says, Light shall shine in the darkest of places, and raise up all those that are lowly. On the wicked will drop a heavy gate. Holy light tracks, pursues, and chases, and crushes all those who are not holy, so that God alone can radiate Pick a starting skill. Shield block, divinity, herbalism, or parry. Ooh, okay. So let's go ahead and see which one of those that we want. Shield block, divinity, herbalism, or parry. All right, well, shield block would be is a very good skill, but we don't have a shield. We're not going to start with a shield, I don't think. Uh, maybe we should look at our, our star sign, too. Of the rabbit says, pick a starting trapping. Door wedge, dagger, or potion of luck. Okay, yeah, so we're not going to start with a shield. So I think I'm going to pass on shield block, but then we could get either divinity, herbalism, or parry. Let's see, divinity, herbalism, or parry. Where about are those? <laughs> here we go, we got herbalism, we got divinity, I must have passed up parry, parry's right here. You may attempt to block all initial damage with your primary weapon. If we roll a one, it fails and our weapon breaks, a two through a four will fail, and a five or a six will succeed, that's okay. Herbalism plus one energy when you cook at a campsite, I like that. Drinking an antidote will cure all poison. That's pretty cool. And then divinity. Whenever you gain energy, you may convert it to health. You gain two blessings when you choose to pray at the altar. That's pretty cool. I think I kind of want to get herbalism. I want herbalism, dude. Let, well, whenever we cook at the campsite, we'll get plus one energy. That sounds good, dude. We're gonna be a we're gonna be a ball and cook. So we're gonna go ahead and grab herbalism as our starting skill. I don't think I've ever started with that skill, so this ought to be pretty interesting. Go ahead and set the rest of the skills here. And we'll set our Parson. I'm actually going to put it like this, overlapping. That way we've got um, these little stats at the bottom here. We can see what our max health and energy is. And then, of course, we've got our star sign, which is of the rabbit. Pick a starting trapping. Door wedge, dagger, or potion of luck. And then we have the agility attribute. And we get plus one morality. That's cool. So we start out with one morality. That's neat. I think I want the dagger... Yeah, I think with the dagger, so that way we have we go in with a weapon. So let's go ahead and look through the trappings. Here we go. It's either the door wedge or the potion of luck. I mean, let's check let's check that out. So we all know what the door wedge does. We've seen that a billion times. Discard to avoid an ambush or skirmish. It's really good. The potion of luck, though, 
discard to re-roll all of your dice during an attack, or discard to re-roll the dice from an enemy's attack. That is pretty cool. That's pretty cool, but it's like a one-time thing. I mean, I don't know. You know what I'm saying, dude? We could get a dagger. Let's see, where's the dagger? Where about is the dagger? We also have two gold, too. We could buy... Ooh, we could buy the cutlass. That'd be a good weapon to get. Reroll all attack results of one. Okay, maybe we're going to buy the cutlass with our gold. And then maybe we'll use our of the rabbit star sign to get... You know, we've gotten the door wedge a billion times. Let's just get the potion of luck to experience something new. Let's have fun, dude. Let's have some fun here. So we're going to go ahead and grab the potion of luck. Uh, we'll set this. We'll just set this right here on our dude. You, you know what? We'll set it down here. We'll put it down here by the icons. There we go. It would be cool if, if Jason came out with a new game mat that uh, could facilitate these new little additions to the game. I would totally buy it. Jason, if you're watching, please do that. I would buy it. <laughs> Take my money. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and spend the two gold here, like so. And we're going to get uh, the Cutlass as our weapon, like that. And then we're going to get the Potion of Luck. So again, we can discard this to reroll all of our dice during an attack or discard to reroll the dice from an enemy's attack. We'll put that down there like so. And then, yeah, guys, we got our character set up. Let's go ahead and get all of the little decks of cards nice and shuffled up on camera so you guys know everything is legit. Everything is fair here on the Game Night YouTube channel. And uh, here we go, guys. This is going to be fun, dudes. I'm excited. This is my second playthrough with the new character creation system. I believe we played a half orc. It was a half orc something. <laughs> I can't remember what it was. It was of the tortoise. It was an half, a half-orc something of the tortoise. I can't remember what the class was. But, uh, yeah. It, uh, I think we got beat by the boss. We, like, we, like, rushed to the boss. We got there super fast and then ended up dying to the boss. So I'm hoping that, um, this one will be a little bit more eventful this time. I'm pretty sure I got, like, two enemies in the graveyard before I fought the boss last time. So it was a very, very quick run. All right. And then you may also notice I'm using the Dungeon Deck 2, the Howling Abyss, for this playthrough. A lot of you guys have been asking for it, so here it is. We're going to go ahead and use the Dungeon Deck number 2 for this playthrough. I think that ought to be fun. Been using the OG Dungeon Deck a lot. It is my it is my favorite. I do prefer the, the original, but I do enjoy this one also. So let's see. Let's see if it could change my mind here. Okay, guys, I think we're all good and ready to go. I'm using the, the reverse side of the little dungeon card. I usually usually use this side, but it's like, you know what? I'm going to change it up. We're going to use this side. We're going into level one of the dungeon right there like so. And uh, yeah, guys, here we go. I'm excited. Okay, we're going to head into it here. Let's go ahead and see what we got on level one of the dungeon in Iron Helm as a crawling. What are we? A crawling parson. That's right. We're a crawling parson. <laughs> Of the rabbit. All right, here we go, dudes. What do we got? We got an archangel. Ooh. A flash of holy light causes you to freeze. When the brightness fades, you see the form of a woman with large wings. She has come to judge your deeds. Check your placement on the morality tracker and refer to the chart below. Okay, well, since we've got the of the rabbit star sign, we started with one morality, which is cool. Gain one health. We're already at full health, so it is what it is. Or just move on. We feel extra vitalized. Let's go ahead and move deeper in. We've got a clearing. Anything can happen in a clearing. Draw and resolve a plot card. We're going to go ahead and draw our first plot card of the game already. What do we got? We found the hid inn. You smell roasting meat and hear the sounds of laughter and clanking dishes. Of all the places to find a secret tavern, you enter the small door and are met with friendly gazes. We can eat and rest by the fire, which will gain us two health and one energy, which we don't need. Or we can gamble, but we have no gold, so we can't do either of those things. But we are going to get two icons. So we're going to go ahead and set our little tracker onto the two over here on our icons tracker. Discard this plot, and we're going to move deeper into level one. That's pretty cool. We're already two eyes toward finding the boss. Eight to go. What do we have up ahead? The magical fountain. Before you stands a grand fountain. You are drawn to it by a potent allure. Your eyes wide open. You cup your hand and ladle the warm liquid to your lips. This might be a bad idea. I don't know if you should just go around drinking, you know, like drinking fluid out of random fountains. Let's let's find out. We got a five. A gift is granted to you. Gain one potion. Okay, maybe you should. <laughs> maybe you should. We got a health potion, dude. Let's go. So we got a potion of luck and a health potion. I like that. That's looking pretty good for us right now. Cool, man. Okay, sweet. Maybe you should go around drinking. No, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> 
Let's go deeper in. Don't drink out of random fountains. The campsite. You have spied a relatively quiet location to set up camp. Let's go ahead and set up a camp, guys. Um, we don't need energy. We don't need health. So I guess let's go ahead and search. And we're going to gain one ration and one gold. Ooh, that's different than the original, dude. You just gain a ration in the original. See, this makes it a little bit easier. I think that was my reasoning, too. That Yeah, I'm starting to remember now. I think the, the dungeon deck, too, makes the game a little bit easier, if I'm not mistaken. We'll see. We'll see. Knock on wood, right? And I don't want <laughs> to jinx myself here. We got the false idol. Your eyes lock on to a huge evil statue carved into the wall. It is begging to be worshipped. What shall you do? We could beg for power, wealth for your life, or ignore the false idol. If we beg for power, we're going to gain two energy and one loot card. We would move down one on the morality track. Okay, if we beg for wealth, we move down one. We gain two gold and one potion. And if we beg for our life, we would move down one, gain two health and one ration. Or we can ignore the false idol and move up one space on the morality track and lose one health. Let's do that. I, I want to be a pious guy. You know what I mean? This crawling parson, he's a good dude. So then we're going to lose one health. We're up to two on the morality track, and we're going to ignore the false side and be like, Psh, I ain't worried about you. Got my face, bro. We move on deeper into the dungeon. Ooh, a mushroom grove. That's amazing. Okay, you have located a grove of young mushrooms. Let's go and roll a die. See what we get. We got a two. I'm pretty sure that's bad. Gain one poison. Crap. Okay, you remember how I was saying it makes it easier? <laughs> that's not part of the mushroom grove in the original. You cannot get poisoned. Okay, maybe it's a little bit balanced out then. This is cool. This is cool. Let's go deeper in. What we got? Ooh, a savage encounter. Before you stands a formidable foe. Draw two enemy cards and discard the enemy with less health. You must fight the remaining enemy, adding the dungeon level plus one to their health. If tied, the player chooses. I kind of want to push my luck. I think I want to push my luck, even though we haven't run into really many skirmishes or anything. Mm hmm. It's kind of sketchy. I think I'm going to I think I'm going to push my luck. Yeah. Into treasure. Oh my god, dude. All right, so we leave that guy behind. We crack open the next door and there's a treasure chest just chilling in the room. This chest must have been forgotten to time as it is brimming with loot. Draw one loot card and one potion card or gain D6 gold and one ration. Dude, that's cool. Whoa, I want the loot and the potion though. Let's see what we get. The loot we get is the iron helm. Yes. Oh my god, dude. Subtract one from both initial damage and counter strikes. That is so good. We can hold up to nine weight, by the way, as the crawling. I forgot to mention that earlier. We're holding two, three, four, and then this way is two. So this will add up to six weight. So we can hold three more. Oh my God, dude, we got the iron helm. That's the name of the game. Dude, let's go. Then we get a potion. What do we get? Boom, an antidote. You may discard this card to remove three poison. And when we drink potions... With herbalism, drinking an antidote will cure all poison. That's cool. We're not drinking potions, but drinking antidotes in particular will cure all poison. Dude, let's go. That's cool, man. All right. I like that, dude. That's a good treasure chest. An iron helm and an antidote. Let's go, dude. Okay, we're going deeper in. We're getting close to the end of the level. There's the skirmish. You draw your weapon and are ready for battle. Draw an enemy card and add the dungeon level to their health. Um, Yeah, we probably should do it. I feel like we've drawn a lot of the cards that are not skirmishes or ambushes i don't want to push my luck too much so we're going to go ahead and draw an enemy card and add the dungeon level which is one to the health of a giant spider so it's got seven health like so all right the giant spider says every time the giant spider successfully hits your next attack costs an extra energy to execute i don't like that that kind of sucks all right the giant spider is going to attack it gets plus two to its attack but we're mitigating one from the Iron Helm, so it gets plus one to its attack. Please miss. It missed! Yes! Oh my god, it's amazing. <laughs> Ask and you shall receive. Okay. Um. Hmm. How much do we want to spend here, guys? He's got seven health. We get to re-roll ones. I guess I'll spend two. That seems good. We're going to spend two energy. Roll two dice. See what we get. We get to re-roll ones with the Cutlass. Ooh, five. <laughs> okay, I guess. He's down to two. That kind of sucks. That kind of sucks. It is what it is. Okay, he's going to retaliate. The giant spider is leaping at the crawling parson of the rabbit. And he misses again, dude. What is wrong with this spider? This spider is trash. All right, we're going to go ahead and spend one. And dude, check this out. 
We get to re-roll once, so we can't miss. What do we get? We got a four. We took him down. Let's go, dudes. Took down the giant spider. Heck yes. Uh, let's see. What do we get from this guy? Nothing. He drops literally nothing. What a jerk. All right, but we do get him in the graveyard, so that's cool. Put him over this way. Move on to the last room of the dungeon. Let's creak open the door. And there's a merchant chilling in here. What are you doing here? Deep in the dungeon. Seems like a strange place to set up shop, but who are you to question his sanity? You may take any number of the following actions. We can buy. So to see what goods the merchant has, you draw three loot cards and two potions. That's pretty cool. And we can sell. The merchant will buy any unwanted items from you for one gold. And we could trade. You may swap any single item you have with an item that the merchant has, as long as the item you give him has greater value than the one you take. Dude, that's cool. That's like a new way to do it. That's neat. So we're going to slide him over this way, and we're going to set up the shop. So three loot and two potions. Let's see what he has for sale. He's got a freaking mimic for sale. Why? Why would you have a mimic for sale? <laughs> the mimic has six life. <laughs> Stupid, dude. You may avoid this conflict by spending one ration. No, we're just going to fight him. We're just going to fight him. All right, the Mimic's going to attack. He's going to do three damage, minus one from our Iron Helm. So he's doing plus two to his roll. And he gets two. Plus two is four damage, jerk. One, two, three, four right there. All right, all right. We're down five health, and we started with 14, so we're at nine. All right, I'm going to spend... Ooh, I'm going to spend two. We're going to spend two energy. I'm going to roll two dice. We get to re-roll ones with the Cutlass. What do we get? We get to re-roll that one. And we did seven damage to take down the Mimic. Let's go. I like it. I like it. Cool. And the Mimic drops nothing. What a jerk. But we do get him in the grave. So we got two enemies in the grave. That's pretty cool. And then we get two more loot. Uh, let's see what we got. We got the Talhoffer Buckler for sale. The Cookbook for sale. Okay. And then he's got two potions. An Ice Shard potion and an Ice Shard potion. Okay. Interesting. 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 So we gain one extra energy when you eat a ration at a campsite. Dude, that, that would go with our herbalism. We'd be getting energy for days at the campsite. I don't think we necessarily need that, though. The Talhopper Buckler would be really good to have, but we don't have any money, which sucks. I mean, we've got the one gold. Yeah, I don't think we could really buy much. Let's just go ahead and spend the one gold and buy an Ice Shard Potion. That seems good. So now we're holding one, two, three, four... And then this is for eight, so we can hold one more worth of weight. But the rest of this stuff is going to get discarded. He can keep the cookbook and the Talhofer buckler. Would have been nice to get the buckler, but it's pretty expensive. And then, uh, yeah, we're going to leave the merchant behind and head into level two of the dungeon. Dude, let's go. That's pretty sweet, man. That was, uh, that was a pretty eventful level one right there. We got two enemies in the grave. We got ourselves some potions. Got a health potion, an antidote, and an ice shard. And uh, we picked up an iron helm. That's pretty dang good, guys. So we're going to go ahead and shuffle up the deck here. Here we go. Get this nice and randomized. Like so. Cool. We're going to eat a ration in between levels, and doing so is going to gain us one energy. We only have the one poison, so we're not going to gain any more. We're going to move into level two of the dungeon. We're going to draw a plot card, and it is the wolf. Your eyes meet those of a frail-looking wolf crouched in the cover of shadows. It looks like the wolf is starving, as it cannot even muster the strength to growl. We can feed the wolf or ignore it. If we feed it, you take one of your rations and give it to the wolf. The frightened creature snaps at you, drawing blood, but quickly turns to eating your offering. Ooh, I don't know if we want to do that. We would lose a ration and two health, but we'd move up one on the morality track and wolves ignore you from now on. I mean, it could be kind of cool. Or we or we ignore the wolf and we move down one on the morality track. Let's do the Dude, let's do it. Should we do it? We're going to do it. We're gonna, Okay, we're going to feed the wolf. Dude, this little bug, there is a little gnat, man, that is just flying around. It has, like, it's been living in my room for, like, a week. <laughs> I don't know how this thing is living so long. Every time I go to record a video, he's like, Hey, bro, what's up, man? You mind if I fly around and drive you crazy? All right, so we're going to lose a ration. Loot will give the wolf some food. He's starving, right? He's going to bite our hand because he's a freaking jerk. We're going to lose two health. It's kind of scary. We're down to seven health. But we do get to move up one on the morality track, so we're at three. And wolves will ignore us from now on. I got a sneaking suspicion we might run into some. We also get two eyes right there. So we're going to get two more icons on our tracker, and we're up to four. Cool. Cool stuff. All right, now we're heading into dungeon level number two. Here we go, guys. As the crawling parson of the rabbit, what do we got? An ambush. You catch your foe by surprise and gain the upper hand. Draw an enemy card. 
and ignore their initial damage. Add three damage to your first attack. Add the dungeon level to the enemy's health. Dude, that's, that's insane. That's so much easier. We're definitely doing it. So draw an enemy card, add the dungeon level two to the health of a zombie. Are you kidding me, dude? You're about to get, dude, I kind of feel sorry for the zombie. He's about to get completely annihilated. All right, he's got four health. We get to attack first and we get to add three to our damage. Okay, we're going to spend one like that. You know what I'm saying? Let's go ahead and row. Oh, so wait, draw an enemy card and ignore their initial, add three damage to your first attack. Could we just punch him and then add three to it? I don't know if that's how that works. Maybe somebody let me know down in the comments. Like, cause you know, if you do your unarmed attack where you don't spend any energy, you can inflict one damage. Can you add the three damage to that first attack? It's probably not how it works. We're gonna roll a die just to be on the safe side, but that'd be interesting if that's how it worked. See what we get. We got a three plus a three is six damage. Took him down easily. There we go, guys. And he drops one loot. Let's see what the zombie drops. An elven bow. Deal two damage to your foe before taking initial damage. Yeah, I'm not crazy about the elven bow. You know what we're going to do? We're going to drink our health potion, right? So we're going to drink our health potion. You may discard this card to gain four health. And that goes into the potion. So we're going to gain four health back. One, two, three, four. Okay, so we go up to 11. Like so. And then, now we should be able to hold this because we got two, four, five, six, seven... And this will be eight, nine. Yep. So we can pick up the elven bow and uh, potentially sell that. Cool. And then we got the zombie in our grave. We've got three enemies in the graveyard, which means, oops, these go over here, which means we can get ourselves a skill. So we'll go ahead and flip these over and we're going to get an agility skill since we've got, um, of the rabbit, we've got agility as our proficiency. It's so cool how the star signs determine your proficiency. So let's go ahead and grab the skills and look for the agility skills here they are so we've got conceal archery martial arts dash six sense shadow dodge yep six sense that's what we're getting six sense once per dungeon level you may either avoid an ambush or reveal both dungeon cards and choose one to resolve 100 percent gone with that that is completely insane let's go ahead and put that right there <laughs> we got to remember too that we have the crawling's ability his race ability that once per dungeon level you may spend health instead of energy to attack an enemy. And if that hit kills the enemy, you gain a blessing token. That's pretty cool. I should probably utilize that to get gain some blessing tokens. All right, here we go. Going deeper in. What do we got? An altar. Ooh, that's pretty cool. Sometimes a sanctuary is found in the least expected place. You stumble to the altar and pray for a blessing, strength, healing, or favor. If we play for, pray for a blessing, we'll gain a blessing token. Strength will gain two energy. Dude, that's pretty good. Healing will discard D6 minus D6 poison tokens or favor to move up one space on the morality track. I think I want strength to gain two energy. Dude, that's insane. So we're going to gain one, two. Oh my God, dude, the altar in the Howling Abyss is insane. Yeah, I just, the game just feels easier to me. I don't know. It just feels a lot easier with this, with this uh, deck. It is fun though. It is still definitely fun. We've got a clearing. Anything can happen in a clearing. Draw a plot card. What do we got? The looking glass. I like this one. As you approach the clearing, you see another person walking in your direction. You quickly realize you are gazing into a mirror that covers an entire wall. You put your hand to it, and your hand pushes through. We can walk into the looking glass or ignore the reflective wall. Let's, let's walk into it. You slowly pass into the mirror and feel a strange breeze pass by you. Roll a d6 and resolve. Ooh, okay, here we go. What are we going to get? We got a 2. It's probably not good. It says, you come through the other side and are face-to-face -face with an enemy. Draw and resolve an enemy card. Crap. <laughs> that sucks. All right, fine. Uh, we also get three eyes toward finding the boss, so we go from four up to seven. Let's go ahead and draw an enemy and resolve it. It's a flying snake. Okay, we can handle it. It doesn't get any bonuses to its health or anything. Um, it does say you gain one poison with initial damage, so that's kind of scary. Okay, the flying snake is going to attack. It does one damage, but we're mitigating it with the Iron Helm, so it's just whatever it rolls. Oh my god, it's a crap ton of damage. I think we want to use Potion of Luck. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and drink the Potion of Luck. Discard to reroll all of your dice during an attack, or discard to reroll the dice from an enemy's attack. We're going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and discard this off to the side since it's a trapping, and we're going to reroll that attack dice for the, the Flying Snake. Oh, and it still does, it still does a little bit of damage. It does three damage and it poisons us. One, two, three right there. So we take that one 
poison. So we're up to two poison. That kind of sucks. Okay, we get to attack. We're going to spend one. And we're going to roll one die. Here we go. And we got a four. Nice. We took it down. Let's go. I was a little nervous about that one. Had a bad feeling about it. And uh, it drops nothing. What is up with these enemies dropping nothing? <laughs> this is crazy. Okay, cool. There we go, guys. That was that clearing plot card, or clearing card, with the uh, with the plot, the looking glass. Let's go ahead and move on deeper into level two. What do we have? Another campsite up ahead. This is pretty cool. Um, I'm kind of thinking... I'm kind of thinking I want to rest. So we're going to... Ooh, we don't have any food. We have no food. Okay, I'm thinking that I want to search then. We're going to search and gain a ration. <laughs> there we go. That's an easy choice. Let's go deeper in. What do we got up ahead? A skirmish. I don't want to skirmish, though. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't want to, though. So we're going to skip it and push our luck into an ambush. Crap. Your foe catches you by surprise, gaining the upper hand. Draw an enemy card and add the dungeon level to their initial damage and add the dungeon level plus five to their health. Okay, that's definitely more difficult. So plus seven to the health of... Yes! Oh my god, yes. A freaking pit trap. If resolving an ambush card that was drawn as the first card, you avoid the pit trap. And all other cases, you lose d6 minus d6 health. This is about as good as it could have been. It's going to suck losing health, but whew, that could have been way worse. Be gentle. Two health. Okay, I can handle it. That's really not that bad. That is not too bad. I believe we're at eight health right now, if I'm not mistaken. Just eyeballing the uh, the life over there. Okay, cool. That could have been really gnarly. Whew. Let's move on from that ambush. We lucked out right there. Let's move deeper into level two. What do we got up ahead? Treasure, dude. We're going to gain one gold. Don't mind if I do. That is a, a potion waiting to be bought from the merchant. We go deeper down. The mushroom grove. Uh-oh, we know what happened the last time we found a mushroom grove. Found a grove of young mushrooms. Yes, dude, gain two rations. Let's go. That makes up for the poisonous mushrooms that we chowed down on earlier. We're up to three rations. Good stuff. Going deeper in. We're getting close to the end of level two. We got an ambush. We're going to do this one. So we're going to draw an enemy card and add the dungeon level to their health. And we get to attack first and add three to it. We add two to the health of a fish man. Ooh, potentially more food. So he's got eight health. Like so. We get to attack first and add two to it. Also, no, or add three to it. I'm also noticing he's weak to ice, and we've got an ice shard. How many enemies do we have that have ice? That's one, two. Dude, I think we're going to fight the ice boss. So I'm pretty sure I should probably hang on to the ice shard. Yeah, we're going to hang on to it. So we're just going to attack this guy. I think I want to use the... Ooh, no. I was going to say I want to use the Crawling's ability, but we're already getting kind of low on health. No, we're not going to do that. I am going to drink this antidote, though, and cure all the poison off of us. Let's go ahead and do that. It sounds like a good idea. And then I'm going to spend two. Yeah, I'm going to spend two because we're doing plus three damage since we're ambushing him. We get to reroll ones with the cutlass. We did seven plus three is ten. Let's go, guys. We took down the fish man. Heck yes. Gain one ration when you defeat the fish man. Fish yummy. Let's go, dudes. We got all kinds of rations over here. And we get a loot. Let's see what the loot is. A field guide. Gain an additional ration when you enter the mushroom grove. Okay, that's pretty cool. We'll go and hang on to that. So we got two, three, four, six, eight. We can hold one more item worth of weight. We'll get this guy in the grave. We just need one more dude, I believe, right? We got two. Yeah, the fish man, the flying snake, just need one more. All right, let's go deeper in. What do we got? A savage encounter? No, no. Heck no. Into the arrow trap. Uh-oh. Your greed has you walking blindly into a storm of arrows. Oh, this could be terrible. Please don't be terrible. Please don't. Oh, it's pretty bad. Gain two poison. That sucks. Right at the end of the level and right when I use my freaking antidote, dude. Come on, bro. Dang, man. All right. Well, that's the end of level two, guys. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? We're going to shuffle up the dungeon deck. That's what we're going to do. And we're going to move into level three here momentarily. Dang, that sucks that we got the two poison right there, though. Oh, man, I just chugged the antidote potion. I was just licking the last drops off my lips or off my beak. Pretty sure he's got a beak. <laughs> what is a crawling anyway? <laughs> it's like a bird. Like, what even is that? What are we? All right, let's go ahead and get this shuffled up. There we go. We're going to eat a ration in between levels. At least we have food, right? We'll gain an energy. We're going to gain a dang poison, which sucks. So we got three poison and we have... One, two, three, four, five, six health. So we're basically at three health effectively right now. That is scary. 
that's uh that's that's pretty scary. We're gonna move into level three of the dungeon. We're gonna draw a plot card and is the well. Near the center of the clearing stands an old well. On closer inspection, you notice the well is full of sweet smelling water. Do you dare to take a sip? Well, I mean, judging by the, the fountain we found earlier, we didn't even think twice about it. So yeah, I guess so. Let's go ahead and drink out of drink out of it. We may as may as well do it, right? Let's see what we get. Please be a good number. That's probably not good. <laughs> we got a one. Gain two poison! Dude, what is happening? No! No, guys. We have five poison. We're basically at one health. We get two eyes. We're up to nine. Good thing we're not fighting the boss, dude. We need to get this poison off of us, man. Are you kidding me? I'm about to just ice shard myself and put myself out of my own misery right now, guys. We can't use our ability anymore. Rip. Dude. Okay, well, well here we go. <laughs> we really need an antidote, man. Need to put that herbalism skill to use. An ambush? Dude, it's like I kind of want to just do it. I kind of want to do it so that we can hope that we get that we get a potion off of this enemy. Let's do it. We're going to add three to the health up. I hope I don't regret this decision. A Morlock. Okay. So he's going to have eight health. It says uh, you may discard a torch or use a lamp to defeat the Morlock before taking initial damage. We don't have either of those items, unfortunately. Crap, dude. Well, you know, we can't have him hit us, so I think... Well, we're doing plus three damage, right? Let's just spend two. We're doing plus three. We're doing plus three since we're ambushing. That's insane, by the way, that you get to do plus three damage when you ambush. Is he weak to ice? He's not. He's weak to fire. All right, let's see what we get. Yes, nine plus three is 12. We completely annihilate this freaking dude. He doesn't drop a potion, though. He does drop a loot. What is it? Please be health. Ooh, a ration. You may discard this card to regain two energy. We're just going to go ahead and do that right now. We'll gain two energy back. The two that we just spent to fight this guy. We'll get him in our graveyard. We've got three in the grave. We're going to go ahead and flip them. Like so. We're going to go ahead and grab our skills. And we get an agility skill. Um, Conceal might be good. You can avoid combat. That might be pretty good. Dash. I mean, that could be pretty good too, dude. Shadow. Gain one less poison. Damage from the arrow trap. We might want to get that, honestly. <laughs> we might want to get dodge. <laughs> Do we want to? No, I think I want dash, man. I want dash. Once per dungeon level, you may spend energy to avoid any dungeon card and roll to see how much energy you spent. A one or a two, you spend half your energy. Three or four, you spend one energy. Five or six, you spend no energy. This card's insane. We're going to go ahead and grab dash. Seems good. Shout out to Grimly, who starts with the dash ability. All right, uh, we'll move past that ambush. Okay, we're going further into level three. Crack open the door. We got the archangel. I think I think something good's about to happen. So we get to uh, we get to look at the tracker below, and we've got let's see, we've got a three on the morality track. So we gain two health if you have two or three morality. That's good. Okay, we desperately needed that, so we gained two health. All right, we're basically at three health now instead of one, with the five poison. But we need an antidote, big time. We got a campsite. We could rest. To gain three health and lose a poison. Let's do that. So we're going to spend a ration. We're going to gain three health. Okay, at least we're gaining health. One, two, three. And we're going to lose one poison. So we're down to four. Only four poison, guys. Feels good. Feels good. We're, we're a, a shade of green, a, a hue of green lighter now. Let's go deeper in. Oh, no. Dude, we got a clearing, but that's probably going to send us to the boss. Do we want to push our luck? <laughs> Should I six sense and see what's the other way? I really want to find I really want to find the merchant. So um, once per dungeon level, you may either avoid an ambush or reveal both dungeon cards and choose the one to resolve. So I'm gonna use that, and we're gonna see what is the other way because I really want the merchant. Ooh, a savage encounter. Yeah, that sucks. I don't, I definitely don't want to do that, dude. We need the merchant though. Maybe we just head to the boss man and risk it. All right, we're gonna do the clearing. We're just gonna do it. We're gonna draw a plot card. See what it is. It's the corpse. You trip over the corpse of a fellow adventurer. As you stagger to your feet, you realize the body belongs to a friend from years past. We could bury the corpse or take the money and run. If we bury it, we're going to lose one energy and move up one on the morality track. No, we're already getting low on energy. We need to take the money and run. You search the corpse for anything that may aid you and you leave the corpse behind. Move down one on the morality track and draw one treasure card. Okay, so we're going to move down one and go to two. We're still good. We're still pious. Draw a loot card. An undeath potion. That's pretty cool. Discard to destroy any undead foe with five or less base health or 
Discard to make any enemy weak to undead attacks. So we've got two, three, four, six, eight, and we can pick it up since it weighs one. Perfect, like that. And then we gain one icon, our final icon toward finding the boss. And we're heading to the boss, just like that, guys. Here we go. At least we healed up a little bit and got a little bit of that poison off of us. Um, yeah, let's see how many enemies we've got of each type. So we've got an undead. We've got a fire, an ice. I'm pretty sure we're fighting the ice boss. We got another fire, an ice, and an ice. So we've got three ice uh, enemies right there. So we are fighting the ice boss, which I believe is the lurker. Yes, the lurker. Boom. There he is, guys. The lurker right there. We have no blessings, by the way. Rip. He's got 22 health. Go ahead and set up a couple of 11s on him, like so. Does five damage. Five. It's ridiculous. He's weak to ice. We got the ice shard potion. I like that. Attacks from the lurker. Ignore defenses, defensive bonuses gained from shields or bucklers. We don't have a shield or buckler, bro, so get wrecked. All right, guys. Here we go. Uh, this is scary. This dude is about to wail on us. We're mitigating one damage from the iron helm, so he's doing plus four to his damage. Please miss. Please miss. Oh, so one plus the four is five damage. Holy moly. One, two, three, four, five right there. Yee. How much do we have left? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six health right there. And we've got four poison. So we basically have two health left. He's going to have to miss on his next attack. Otherwise, I think we're just screwed. Yeah, this sucks. We're going to spend three. Can we do anything? Herbalism doesn't help us. Dash doesn't help us. Six doesn't. No, there's like nothing we can do. Nope, there's nothing we can do. We just got to hope that he misses his next attack. Let's roll high damage at least, man. We get to reroll once with the cutlass. Get to reroll this once. That's seven right there. Plus five is 12. That's pretty good. All right, we put him down to 10. Not too, too bad. And uh, yeah, we just need him to miss. All right, guys. Muster. Muster your will with me, guys. Send me your positive energy. Send the positive vibes our way, guys, so we can go ahead and get this lurker to miss. Here we go. He's doing plus four to his roll. We need him to miss. Rip. He does five damage. He puts us at one health, and we've got four poison, and the crawling parson of the rabbit has succumbed to the power of the lurker. Rip. There it is, dudes. Rip the crawling parson of the rabbit, man. That was a rough one with all that poison right there toward the end of the dungeon, but it is what it is, man. Had we only waited a turn or two to use this antidote right here, we might have been okay, because with herbalism, it cures all your poison when you drink an antidote. We could have got all of that poison off of us, but it is what it is, guys. Hindsight is 20-20, right? So there it is, dudes. Hit that thumbs up like button, click the red subscribe button, and click the bell so you never miss an upload. And guys, there's going to be more Iron Helm action coming your way with more of the character creation system from the Gnome Pack. So be on the lookout. And until next time, have a good one. See you guys in the next video.